Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my amazing interviews. Now, you may know that over the last uh, few shows, I've been talking about the legal system, the legalese, the way that the uh, the courts, the acts and the statutes, the government, uh, they all try to sort of get jurisdiction and capture you and put you into the system under the legal fiction that capitalized name of you and now some of this may be a bit baffling some of this may be something you already know so I thought it would be time to bring my friend Stuart on who has been in in this situation for a long time tested the uh, tested the system got himself out of the system and many people have said well Richard you know show me somebody who's done it so that's what I'm doing so welcome to the show, Stuart. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Richard. Nice it's to lovely. see you at last. It's nice, nice to see you on the show. And thank you very much for coming on. So I thought what we should do, there's a lot of, this is quite a complicated thing. It's simple when you've got the grips of it, like riding a bike. But at the beginning, or, or driving a car, there's so many things to think about, isn't there? And I thought we should start, really, because you've been very much my mentor on this, uh, helping me understand it behind the scenes. Maybe we should just talk about the system itself and the fact that in an ideal world, we want to be in the private rather than what they call the public. Could you help me out with that? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> so basically, you have to, you have to separate um, the legal system from the lawful system. Right. So, in other words, we have a private system that you should always be in, and, you sh and, and you've also got a public system which uses legal fictions. Yes. Which you've touched on quite greatly. So, ho hopefully, the viewers will understand a little bit about legal fictions. That they so are this this not you it's just a, an interpretation of you it's a yeah. corporate you um just as if you would have a um a, a company and you would set up um a company that isn't you you could be a director of it but it isn't you it's this yeah. inert object that needs somebody to speak for it to be able to come you know to converse with the world the commerce yeah. So, and so I mean, I've, private... I've, I'm sorry, sorry I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I, I associated it to like if you're looking after the estate of your, uh, uh, you know, you're the executor of an estate. The estate is, is no longer there. It's just this name and you're dealing with the it's kind of, as you say, a company, but it has this name that, that in your case is is the same name that your parents gave you, but it isn't actually you. Yes. If you if you think about it as they made a company out of you. Mm. Yeah, out of the birth certificate, which is basically where I'd like to start with it to give a little bit more of an understanding um, how this how this how your birth then um, everything happened from that that point. Mm. Um, so I'll, I'll just I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown of, of how I view it. Okay. So um, basically, um, when you were born, your mother and father, um, either one of those, registered you. Now, when you register something, what's very important and fundamental to understand is anything you register, you give the title away. So what is title? Title is is the the fact that you give the um, the object away be it a car, be it, um, anything that you do, marriage, uh, your child, your um, anything like that. Once you register something, you've got people have to understand fundamentally the giving title away. So you then only have the use of that object or in the case of your child, they call you a parent, which is parent. It's a legal um, um, connotation that basically gets you into believing these legalese parent when you're the mother and father. So if, if you like to think of it as private and public, there's a good little bit of a synergy where the private is the mother and father and the public is parents. 
R right. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. So yeah, and, and so we're kind of getting into the language of the two, the two universes. In if you like, you've got the private universe, which you're just you know you're dealing with men and women, living men and women, and the 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 public, which is this corporation, as you said, the the way that companies use your capitalized name, the legal fiction, to interact with you if you so wish to interact with it. Yes. And, and the, and the word is... uh, Yeah. And what? the parent sorry. word, sorry, no, the parent word is a, a legalese term because really they're your mother and father. Correct. And, yeah. a, and I suppose we should just say that there's a lot of this where words appear to be the words that we use every day. And I use the, the example about a car in the private is a conveyance because it conveys you but in the in the corporate world or in the legal world in the pro, in the public it's a vehicle or a car and it's very difficult to separate you know if you don't know it's difficult to separate those two things but you're talking different languages aren't you yes and hopefully this this informal chat today is mm. Is just to uh, advise and, and just to um, make people have a, a better understanding that we've been done down by the system, by schooling, um, that nobody has had any education on law or what I call the legal system, which is pseudo law. Yes. Um, and it appears system. law, but it isn't. It's a system. Yeah. Um, and, and I think. You know that, that just to, to have the two sides legal and lawful if you asked the normal man in the street or lady in the street and you said to them what's the difference how a lot of people wouldn't be able to differentiate between the two mm. so what we're going to try to do today is separate the private from the public from the legal system yeah and, and, and that and the, that the aim is Go on. So, yeah, sorry. I was just going to say that in and of itself, the private and the public is a confusing term because the public in and of itself is a confusing thing, isn't it? Because you think of it as being public and open to the public and for the public. But in a way, it's its own little private domain, isn't it? It is. It is. And, and they... The, the system confuses you to um, to not understand what is actually trans you know what what's mm. going on um, so that you believe that you are um, a, a legal fiction as well as a living man so you're in the private and the public and the whole point of the system is to get you into into that legal system at a young age well they do that through the birth certificate as I've said. So what happens when you're, and I'm sorry if you can hear any noise, but I think it'll stop very soon. Oh, uh, it's right. just the watcher. <laughs> um, so basically what happens is when your, your mother and father register you, their baby, you, um, they do so um, under, under a guise that they are, and, and they don't understand what they're really doing because they're the informants on the birth certificate, which you've rightly stated. Mm. When really, if they understood what is really going on, they would they would cross out the word informant, put the word executor, and therefore they would be the executor of the child. Now, there's nothing to stop anybody doing that. It's just people are educated to understand what is actually happening there. Now, in, in and of itself, the birth certificate is just a record of live birth, but it has a CUSIC number, which is the nine red digit numbers on the bottom right hand side. Look at it. Basically, what that does is it provides the document with a, 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 a identify, a identified, identical of that document so that what they do with that be it a day later a week later a month later uh, and i would suggest it would be nearer the month what happens then is they read they they then bond that document and um you are basically collateral for the national debt 
and it's a good business. I'm a, I'm I'm an ex businessman, so you know I I look at this from a business perspective. It makes sense. You don't need the the permission of anybody to set up a trust. That's why trusts are set up in Bermuda, in Jersey, um, and the British government uh, for years have gone along with all these this dodgy money. These and and they've allowed all these trusts to be set up. Cayman Islands is another, um, and all these trusts have been set up. And over time, um, they've had to clamp down a bit. But the ones that are set up are still operating, and the right. government turned a blind eye to it. So the government are actually very versed in these trusts, in creating, and uh, you know, constructive trusts. So let's let, let's very just versed in that. Right. Let's just let's just pull back for a second because. There's just quite a bit to unpack just there. So just to recap, your your parents, they've informed the registrar. The registrar takes the information. It's then bonded, as you say, with this number on and is is put on the on the stock market, is it, as collateral for the national debt? Yes. And a, a trust is formed. Yes. Now, we know that the trust is formed because we can go back to documents like you um, identified, you know, the 12 court presumptions that talks about um, the, the, the fictions and, and how they want to create you as a trustee and a um, executor. And this is where the confusion always arises. And that goes back to what I've just been saying about the birth certificate, that the executor, the, your mother, and most mothers tend to sign um, the the document, but what they needed to do was to cross out signature, to write autograph, because there's another example of legal and lawful, or private and public. So the autograph is private, and the signature is legal. So if you are signing something and it says signature and you sign it, you're agreeing to be both parties. Yeah, as in the legal fiction, the private and the public, you know, so you, 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 you're being both parties and that's what they want. That's called joinder and therefore they can gain jurisdiction. So by the mother, if, 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 if education was there, the mother would have, have, have autographed, rubbed out the name, the signature word and write autograph and then she would have autographed it um so that it would be identified she was the executor and sole beneficiary until the child reached the age of majority which in england is 18. in, right. in america it's 21. it's called the age of majority yes before the age of majority you are known as a minor as a guardian of the state because your mother and father handed you over agreed their consent to give you to the state and that's when you become a ward of court and you need a guardianship yeah yes, so that's that, where it all starts without going too much into it yeah because it's, it's, is, it's it is it is very it is very complicated and and we're we trying to keep this very simple if we can just so yeah. that so that people who are new to this um and i'm still new to it and you know i'm getting it all the time um so just to interpret just to go back that the, the the birth certificate is set up as a trust and you have the normal offices of the trust, the triangle of the trust, the the administrator or the executor. You have this, the beneficiary and the trustee of that of that Correct. birth trust. And so that's set up. And as you said at the beginning, the name that is attached to it that you think is you is not actually you. It's it's just effectively a company and the system that we are in the legal system that wants to do this it all the times all the time wants us to agree to be that so that Correct. when you so when you for example you mentioned about a car if you register your car you give away the title as you said and and of course if you look on the piece of paper the um the logbook you are only the registered keeper, not the owner, even though Correct. 
you've just spent X many thousand pounds on that car thinking I own this car. You gave it away or the garage Correct. said, yeah. So, so, and that's how they get you into the system. So all the time you are in this legal system, believing that you are this, um, this capitalized version of your name which comes yes. in on all the letters, which we've seen on passports, on bills, on income tax, you know, all of these official documents. That's how you're represented. Um, and, that, and that's the system. But if you were in the private, um, you wouldn't be in any of that. If you're, so if your parents yeah. didn't register you at all and just said, no, I'm not going to say a word, I'm just going to have a baby... I mean, you'd be restricted, presumably. You wouldn't be able to get a bank account. No. No, I know uh, people that haven't registered the child and they've still got bank accounts. They've still got passports because they're older now. And that isn't the case. Ah. So the problem is, the problem is that you, you, your mother and father, mainly the mother, is placed under duress because uh, she's the, there's fines and menaces attached if she doesn't register the child. I think it's within 14 days. Mm. So straight away that tells you, if you have any contract that's under coercive control uh, or coercive means, then it, there's no contract to start with. It's void ab initio, which means void from the beginning. Yes. It's a Latin term. And basically, from that time forward, um, because y your mother signs, she's given you away tacitly giving you away no you know because she doesn't know any different no. and this is part of the system and the scam or deception that that belies uh, every mother and, and newborn children every day yeah. so people need to just get a grasp now just before i go on i'd like to say that this is i'm not going to give any solutions today but what i'm going to do is try and open people's eyes to the fact that that you need an understanding of law which nobody has because it's not taught at school it's only right. taught if you're going to go into the profession uh, yeah. at 21 after you've been to, to university or whatever and therefore my my remit today is really just to um, enlighten people a little a little bit not to give solutions today because i think you've got to you've got to have an understanding of what actually is going on in the legal system how it operates um before you can get to the the point of protecting yourself yes um and a lot of it is about self-learning you can be directed to things but it is about having the the ability to be able to have the knowledge yourself and the critical thinking to be able to go and research everything uh, and come to your own conclusions. But one thing is very certain, that you need a good understanding. To be an executor of even a will or any, anything, uh, certainly a legal fiction, you have to have a good understanding of law. And, you know, I'm here today not because I'm writing a book and making money. Um, in fact, you, you know, over our conversations over many, many months, I've always been against making any any money whatsoever, haven't I? Mm. About out, out, so, of, out of the truth. Out of, yeah, out of the truth. I'm here mm. just to say this is what I found in my experience. I've, I've, I've tested the system. I know how it works. Um, I know which I can come on to in future in future time, but for now I just want to be able to educate people into into understanding how the legal system operates. Uh, and once you get to a level um, with your help over a few few of these chats and what have you, you'll then become aware of how simple it is really, but how because nobody's had any training, they just can't un can't just get your head round it. And I think right. you were in that position, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I mean, this is the problem that we have had: is that your the, the any time you have any dealings to do with the law, you are advised to talk to a solicitor. Um, and if it goes to court, you assume again. You've made assumptions. You've made the presumptions based on what's been told to you that they're going to do they're going to be fair and all above board 
But the truth is very different because Absolutely. they've got their assumptions. And unless, you, as we've seen with the 12 presumptions in law, unless you actually rebut what they've said, then they will get jurisdiction from you and turn things around into a, into a way that's not necessarily. I mean, sometimes it works in your favour, as it did with the case where I had a, 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 a problem parking and it was so bleeding obvious it was the other party's fault. Uh, the, the, the court case, the simple magistrate's course on this parking ticket just went in my favour. I didn't know any different, so just went along in a normal way. Um, they weren't going to make a lot of money out of it, so it was no skin off their nose. They've got to have a few um, people uh, go away feeling that, that the law practised correctly. Otherwise, we'd all know it was a scam all the time. That's good, but in law, you have to be in honour. You have to be honourable. You have to act honourably. Mm. And the problem is, to do that, you've got to either act, you've got to either be in it or out of it. Um, if you want to accept the statutes and acts and everything like that. Mm. So it, it, going back to the birth certificate, um, I, th I think it's best just finishing that off, just to give a little bit more, more information on that. It's my understanding that the Bank of International Settlements were set up in 1933. And the purpose was that, that in 1933, the America got taken off the gold standard and that is the, the year that everybody started to be bonded. Before 1933, I'm not sure what happened, um, but of course we, we, we go on to the settlement certificates and you know before the passports and all that sort of stuff, uh, which we can go on to another day. It'd be an interesting chat so that people can see you know, how, how, how identity has progressed through the ages. Yes. Um, but basically, you got bonded for five hundred thousand pounds if you were born between nineteen thirty three and nineteen seventy five. It's gone up since nineteen seventy five, and I, I believe that's nearer the million pounds. So they want new influx into the country to give citizenship, another legal construction word, um, because if you if you have people coming in then you bond them and the system can carry forward. So maybe that's why we do have immigrants coming in and maybe that's why they do want people so that they can bond them. Where's the money coming from? Well, somebody who was bonded in 1933, um, or your father, say in the 30s, late 30s, I presume. Yeah, he was um, born 1934. Well, there you go. My father was born 1936. So they were bonded. And when, when my father died uh, in his 80s, and your father was probably similar, yeah. um, they were, they had, uh, they were, they, their assets were very, very great. Now, what I did when I um, went to uh, register my father's death is I made sure that the way that I documented that information on, on the legal official paperwork was such that I am the controller and executor of his legal estate. So I'm going to come on to that in another another vlog. Yes, because most, it, it, most it, people don't. Most people just follow the normal instructions, as I did, and you've effectively said goodbye to that legal estate and the money in the trust and all of that. But you haven't necessarily, because you can claim um, executorship at any time. And if you've right. been misled or deceived, then, of course, that's a criminal offence against the party that you're making the criminal allegation against. Right. So, well, we'll get on, we'll so get on to all of that um, in another way. We'll get ahead of ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. So, so going, yeah. going back to the birth certificate, it was saying you were bonded for that amount of money and... Um, that's how the system carries on and on and on. And the people that then um, ha hand the trust back to the government, the state, the state then cash those bonds in. And of course, that pays for another X amount of hundreds of thousands of people uh, to be bonded another half a million, well, a million pounds, let's say nowadays. So that's how it perpetually runs, yeah? And the cycle goes on and on and on. So it, it is a matter of fact that birth rate has to be 2.1 um, children to each mother, uh, to each person on the planet. And I use person 
loosely because I should say living men and women on the planet. Because um, person's another um, another legal term. It's another legal fiction, yeah. It's another legal legal catch that they put in there and everybody. And if you remember the first time I ever saw talked to you, Richard, I said you're not a person, didn't I? That's right. That yeah. was the that was the first conversation. But anyhow, so going back to to um um the the system we're on and i lose my train of thought quite a lot because there's so much buzzing around in there oh, I know. um you know um so basically the 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 bond is all set up and then you're in the system for life then you 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 know you, you your parents you can't be blamed for it they didn't no. know they weren't educated and you've got to think at our parents time of life they didn't have the the um information technology that we have today so they were totally in the dark weren't they yeah absolutely so it's only through the advent of computers and uh, uh, you know being able to research information that we're a lot more astute these days um but it, within that, the 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 system has brought about television, where they program you, and you've been on about being programmed. They are programs we watch, um, and all, all the football and all the sport and everything to distract us. Over so so they've they've caused more distractions as information's been more available. Yes, um, and that's where we are today. So it's only since the advent of, I would say, 2005 with the computers, before that time, it was very, very difficult um, to get onto the internet. It was dial-up. It, was, it was, yes. wasn't and really course, fit for purpose. So, so the internet itself has freed up a lot of information. People who've known stuff and found out can share that information, as we are doing now. Can I, get, can I take us back to the difference between the private and the public and the, so the public is the system that they use which as we've seen is to make a lot of money for a very small bunch of people and the rest of us are we all think that we're uh, debtors but actually the we're all in credit by a, a huge amount of money we'll get onto that in another show and things like that but it's just worth putting that at the back of our minds I'd like to just try and work out if we can to help people the real difference between private and public in as much as what does it mean to live in the private are you completely debt free uh who do you trade with where does commerce come in or trading you know that sort of thing what are we talking about when you live in the private well, the private is hard to live in the private. Unless people want to go off grid and down, downgrade their standard of living, the, the system, the monetary system, the fractional reserve fiat currency system, has kind of indebted people into that system um, yes. over, over many years. And I think most people know money is created from thin air. It's yeah. created from nothing. And when you when you way, borrow when you borrow money from the bank, it's 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 created so that businesses can borrow, individuals can borrow. Yes, and again, it's a perpetual cycle that they need to keep lending out the debt, mm. so, so that so that it you, can carry on. Yeah. So in the private, I mean, the private operates under natural law, doesn't it? There's it's yes. the, the the gentleman's handshake. The that's the, what the, it used the, to be. Yeah, it used to be. I, I, um, I'm just thinking, you know, you say it's very difficult to live in the private. I'm just trying to sort of give an idea so that people know what that actually means. You would you would trade with other men and women, but not with corporations. Is that right? Yes. I think it's it's very difficult these days because you have to interact with corporations to get yes. your electric, your gas. There's very few people have the the ability to be able to live totally off grid. And want yes. to live totally off grid. No, no, um, I, I I agree with that. I'm just trying to highlight what it means actually to be private. Is that you've you you know the fact that you can do these things, but that means you go into the public with limited liability, and we'll get onto that in a second. I'm just trying to highlight what what just what it means if you were as you say you're 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 not interacting with corporations. You're dealing with just other living men and women. You're your code of conduct, if you like, is natural law, do no harm. Um, you're not living under <coughs> act, acts and statutes and legislation. 
they don't bother you because you're not in that realm. I'm just trying to sort of paint that picture of what what private means. Of course, as you've just alluded to, it's it's very limiting in the world we're in now because the way the world is set up with the system is that if you want to have a mobile phone or an, or electricity, you have got to deal with corporations, which means you then have to step into this murky world. Is, have I have I um, sort of yes, painted you, you, the right you, picture? You have. I think I think the private, as as I view it, is that you've got the least restrictions placed on you. The right. least restrictions. So that means that you it's up to you you've got to enter the public only when you need necessary items or whatever to to that you need that it's your choice um now that might mean uh, i can live on a, a hillside in a tent and mm. you don't need any interaction because you don't want internet you don't need a phone you don't need anything you don't need holidays you don't need anything whatsoever so it's you, you kind of uh, some people could could live in a nice house with all solar on and their own water supply um, from a borehole or something like that. Um, and those people could live off grid quite comfortably. They could grow their own food if they've got some land um, and more or less be self sufficient. Um, so. You know, there are degrees of living in the private. I think that's fair to say. Yes, no, absolutely. And that, that, that's from 100% down to 10%. But yeah. I think the art is to realise what what you can avoid going into the public for. Yes, yes. No, I agree. Absolutely. So I just wanted to paint that the, the whole, the, the whole uh, private side is that, and it is... It's ideal because nobody else knows your business or is poking in or asking you for money or you're not paying taxes. You're not you're not responsible to anybody other than yourself and your family. But of course, that's extremely limiting and difficult in this modern day where every bit of land, unless you've got an laudable title, is, you know, it's owned by some or supposedly owned by the crown. And, and then every service or utility you want, somebody wants some money for it. And, and I suppose if you think of, say, animals like a rabbit or a fox, they live in the private. They don't pen, spend any money. They, they, they go and search for their own food and they're perfectly in the private until they then turn up and knock on the door and say, I'd like to, uh, like you know, food. like some... Yeah, or some electricity or something like that. And then suddenly they, they've they stepped over. And, of course, we, we have to do that in, in this world that, that's been set up. So tell us how that works, because as soon as you go into the public, you are now under the jurisdiction of legislation, acts and statutes, the government. But if you know what you're doing, as you said, about learning the law, you don't have to fall foul of it because you can you go in with limited liability maybe you could explain what that means right well you'll know that most solicitors firms these days are llps which is limited liability partnership and what does that mean then is it a limited well, that liability means, that means that the 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 a living man or woman is employed by that company so, um, and they have limited liability should that company do any wrong, harm anybody or go bankrupt or anything like that. They can't, it's like a limited company really, which is exactly the same. It's just the new term, limited liability partnerships, where there's more than, uh, where there's a few directors uh, rather than the limited, which tended to be one, maybe two people in the olden days. You know, you'd have a curtain shop or a, a clothes shop or a vegetable shop, you know, which have all disappeared now. Um, well, yeah. greatly. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, 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 the public, when you, when you go into the public, you have to go in with, without gaining, without having any liability or limited liability. And there are ways to do that. Um, and again, this... And, 
conversation and, today. We don't want to get too bogged down in it. No, no. But there are ways to do it that we can explore um, that are legal and lawful. Um, but if you're not taught them again, you, you don't understand them. Yes. So, but, so just, today, just to, I think it's better just generalising on. Uh, no, I totally things. agree. So again, you've just used two terms there, lawful and legal. We should just um, say that in the private, it's lawful. Things that you do are lawful. In the public, it's legal. That's the legislation, the, the um, acts and statutes. And the liability, the bit you're talking about, about the, and, and I'm just trying to interpret for those that, that aren't following as quickly as most people probably are, is the, the limited liability. When you go into the public, you become liable or potentially become liable for all sorts of things. So you're, you're going in cautionarily, if, if that's a word, you're, you're going in very carefully so that the liability that is on your, you know, the responsibility you have for paying things, you are completely aware of and you've made sure that you, that, that liability is as limited as possible, for you. which is, yeah, for you. So, um, so that's, and once you know that, because most people are not limited liability, uh, in li you know, they take the whole responsibility and they always think that, that, you know, that's why when you go to court or what have you, they get the jurisdiction and you're liable for the bill because, um, because they've taken advantage of you. So, correct. so yeah, so we've stepped into the public. So, um, and you've gone in with limited liability. So hopefully people kind of, they may not know how to do that yet. And we'll get onto that because, as you say, this is just a general conversation. Um, yes. So what other things, I mean, here's, a, here's an area. It, it's, it's very murky because people think that their council is a public building, that courts are public building publicly owned and things like that but actually even that is not the case absolutely it's not technically correct because they're running a private system and the only public courts are a very far and few between these days because um you need a court um that has a trial by jury and trial by jury do not happen in this country you have a jury hearing which is completely different to a trial by jury and again it's it's understanding um we're not we're kind of saying one's private again a trial by jury and and a, a, a jury hearing is more public yet yeah, where a single judge makes the decision um uh, and he directs the jury, this is a, a jury hearing, he directs the jury on what he thinks the statutes and acts uh, are, have been, you know, offended. Mm. Uh, uh, the the other, the, the trial by jury, is your 12 Angry Men film. It's your film where the judge says nothing and the jury tests everything, the law, the statute, everything, and the judge doesn't have any say. And mm. that is something that we were proud of in this country to have. But unfortunately, we don't have any more. And the date for that was 1933. Again. So there's a lot of things that are happening incrementally over the time to take away people's freedoms. Yes. Take away those in, uh, alienable rights from people. Yes. Um, and it, takes, it, t it does take time to understand who you are um, and by that we mean always stay in the private and only enter the public with the limited liability that we just discussed. And yes. there's ways to do that that are legal, Absolutely. lawful, and nobody will decry you for. Um, Abs Absolutely. Yeah. So, so and, I mean, just to finish, just, just to finish on the on the the public, you know, going into these public buildings like the courts. If it's a magistrate's court, you think of it as being a public building. But it isn't because of the way the law system and we'll, I think, probably talk about the, the private guild and all of that in a separate video about how it's a private meeting. It's not really a public one. It's not on the record. It's and unless you've rebutted again, we keep coming and we will keep coming back to these 12 presumptions of law that you constantly have to say, no, that's not quite right in this instance. I'm rejecting that. Um, so that's that's um, 
again, so there's a lot of deception and a lot of cloak and dagger and a lot of theatre going on that will sl- slowly uncover. And of course, a lot of people will know some of these things and some people will know a lot more and some people won't know any of it, you know. So Ooh. so much of what we've been speaking might be a complete uh, maze or um, confusion for a lot of people and thinking, no, this can't be right. But um, as you say, you've tested the system, you know this is working. The the thing for people to to not worry about is that there are these acts and statutes. I mean, we've just seen, for example, the energy bill has gone in. And under the acts and statutes, at some point, I don't know when, there will be this law that, that apparently the, the, the courts can give a permission for thugs to break your door down if necessary and force you to have a smart meter, which is completely unlawful if you don't want it. But if they get jurisdiction from you, and basically in the clever way that they trick you, you agree to it, then there's nothing you can do. And just because they've passed an act and statute doesn't mean to say that it's law. It's only legislation. And you can reject, rebut the 12 presumptions of law and say, actually, thank you very much, but I'm not part of that system, so go away, you can't put it in. And, and, and so this is part of the learning that, that uh, you've been teaching me and um, hopefully together we'll uh, uh, yeah. bring more people on, on to it. Yeah, so what you've got to do is learn eventually over a series that we'll do and we'll keep talking about it, keep fundamentally, you know, hammering away to make sure and chiseling away to make sure that people get the concept, they understand uh, the law, they understand what an executor does, which is very important because there's a fiduciary duty, which is a monetary duty to protect the accounting in the trust. That's what it means. Um, but again, a different blog, a different day, mm, because these yeah. things take a, a lot of time to digest. And that's why I come back to what I was saying earlier today. You cannot give a one fits all solution. Um, otherwise, people would be writing in the comments below. Well, that was great. It was very informative, but never gave us any solutions. Mm. Well, that's because I think you've got to have a great understanding of the law before we can get to those solutions. I'd be I'd be selling you down the river if if I didn't tell you that. You know, it's all about understanding the law. And if you don't understand how to be an executor, then a trustee will have you removed from being an executor. So you have to be well versed in in legal statutes and acts to a point um, so that you can then rebuttal the presumptions and give them opportunity to rebuttal your presumptions and then come to a consensus and an agreement consensus in an agreement onto where we go from there. And if all parties are in agreement, then maybe you come off better off from the deal or what you're talking about. Um, but it's all about contract law. It's all about knowing how to rebuttal a, a, a contract, how to pen a contract, which means how to write a contract. If you pen something, you write it. Um, and if you can if you can follow this, we'll 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 go through and explore all these avenues so that at the end people can say, right, I now understand what an executor position is, what I need to do. And when you get because you'll do your own research as well, no matter what happens, you'll be you'll be in a position to be able to deal with anything that comes at you. Yes. Where now people would say, Well, do me a letter, do me a letter for this, do me a letter. What happens if this happens? That's why we're better doing it methodically, slowly. You know, it takes lawyers four years of training, five years, just to become solicitors. And the one thing they always struggle with on the first semester at law school is the legal fiction. People yeah. don't get their heads around that. It's mm. a, it's a, it's something that even even lawyers, when they first start out, don't understand how the legal fiction operates. So how can we expect your viewers to just... Just, just, just accept it. An hour no, chat I, yeah. and, just, and just know how to do everything. 
You can't. It's got to be a series. But I think with our help and guidance, I think which is pretty unique because we're not making money out of anything. I just want people to start having an education into learning how to protect yourselves that, you know, we're, we're all we're dealing with like pirates on the sea, really. And we have to make sure that that, you know, we protect we protect our waters um, mm. and, you know, and stay in the private as much as you can. And there so, are ways to do that. Yeah. And, and one thing I should say, I think it's worth mentioning here is the way that they deal with you within legislation and the way that they extract the money from you is is all on paperwork, isn't it? I mean, that's the thing. We get we get these bills, we get these demands, we get these summons, and we'll learn what all of that lot means. And and then we get uppity because we're all men and women with emotions and things, and we go, my goodness, I'm not paying that, for goodness sake. What do you think it is? I'm going to march down and have a word, and I'm going to protest, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to complain from the highest tower, or I'm going to burn the building down. All of that, we get very emot- emotive about it. But they don't get emotional about it. They just send you the paperwork. And that's the response and the way that you deal with it, from what I've learned from you and, and your experience, is you do the same back to them. Using paperwork. Exactly the power- it. Yeah. Um, rather than going on the rampage and getting all annoyed, you just, as you say, you rebut it on paper and you put them on notice and we'll go through all of that and what that means and how you do it so that you're you're not having to have to see red and get annoyed and get emotion. Because you've told me so many times, Stuart, that you've had these letters and suddenly this has come in and you've laughed because you've penned off another letter because you know how to do it. And you've gone, that will see them off. And it does. And it's a position of power once you understand how it works and you don't let it affect you and one of the missions that i think is important in my videos is as well as offering solutions is giving hope and not putting people into fear and just saying look they'll try all these methods but you just write your letters back you're ever so polite you're in honor and you're not worried because they they have to have joiner or they get to you in the, in their jurisdiction, and if you don't let them, that's it. And if you you can only do that if you've got a good understanding of what's happening, and that's yes. what we're here for to try and and, and just cajole people to understand what is happening. That when you see something with a capitalization uh, on it, um, that that isn't you. So why mm. be annoyed? It might mm. as well be your blogs down the road. It's not you. But there's ways to deal with it where you can take the upper hand. And when you do that, it's very powerful, very powerful. And Absolutely. it's not hard, but you have to have an understanding so that you can confidently write those letters and confidently deal with anything that comes your way. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fantastic introduction, I think, Stuart. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it would be interesting to see, see the comments and if people are interested in in progressing this further and just learning obviously do your own due diligence do, 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 do your own research i can't say the term due diligence thank yeah. you very much there we go um uh, check it all out yourself don't just take our words for it of course none of this is um legal advice as they say as a disclaimer um however if you, as as Stuart has just said, you know, you, you, if if it piques your interest and you want to be able to live in no fear and more in the private and be less under the thumb of the legislation, then um, hopefully what we've what well what Stuart's been through and 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 is able to sort of put together will help people. And I think it's very uh, laudable of you, Stuart, to uh, be able to do that. It's been a pleasure, and people need to learn. People need yeah. to know. Brilliant. Level the playing field. It's about time. So there okay. we go, ladies and those. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. It would be interesting to see your comments. Um, do stay in touch. Meanwhile, I'll be back with more monologues and more interviews. Of course, uh, bring Stuart back very soon. But until then, 
from Stuart and I, thanks for watching and goodbye.